everyone so welcome back to child of the kingdom thank you so much for clicking back on my youtube page i just want to thank and greet everyone all my new subscribers because recently i've increased in numbers and i just want to thank everyone for watching my videos before we begin thank you so much i truly appreciate you your commenting and sharing and just your support i thank you guys so much so today we're going to do another installment of the woman of the bible series we're doing woman of the bible number three and today we're going to be talking about someone a little different not sure if you guys have learned about her but she is the widow at Zarephath or Zarephath depending on however you say it and you can find this story in 1st Kings 17 I'm not going to be reading straight directly from the Bible I'm just going to be paraphrasing so be sure to read that scripture and uh, that chapter before you watch this video or do both hand in hand or just remember to do it later so with that being said let's just go ahead and get started so we can see in 1 Kings 17 that Elijah was led by God to go to a certain area and he had no food and no water. Initially, God had let these ravens feed him and feed, give him food and water and things like that, but eventually his resources ran out. So God led him to this widow of Zarephath or Zarephath or Zarephath. And so he met this widow and she was, I think she was taking out water or something like that. And he was like, oh, please like give me water. And she was like, yeah, cool. Like, you know, there's a well, there's probably a well down there she could just walk to and get some water. So she's like, okay, cool. And then he was like, oh, and also make me some bread. And she told him, she was like, hey, my son and I are, you know, very poor. I only have a small container of oil and a little, little bit of flour. I don't have enough for us three. I don't even have enough for us two, me and my son, and he's primary in my life. So I'm sorry, you know, I, I can't give you bread, but I can give you water. And Elijah was like, a man of God, and God has come into your life through me and through your act of service. You know, you're going to prove yourself righteous and faithful. So basically, girl, go make me that bread. It was like kind of pressing, like, I don't have enough to make you bread. And he was like, don't even worry about it. When you do this, like, you will be blessed. So go make me the bread. So she did, and she went and made him the bread. I just want to talk about this for a little bit. How many times have we been in situations where we don't have anything? We don't have enough money. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough something. There's something that we're lacking. Um, even if it's not in an extreme case, like maybe we're not suffering from poverty, but in that moment, we just don't have enough. We see someone who is lacking a lot more than us, but we're like, I want to help you, and I feel so bad, but right now, I just don't have enough for you. We've all kind of been in that situation. Think of sometimes when you walk by homeless people, like let's say you had just spent an hour looking for change all over your room just to take the bus. You're privileged, you have a home, you're able to even take the bus, but in that moment, you're just lacking because you don't have change. So you walk by a homeless person who's perpetually lacking and you're like, you know, I wanna help you, but right now, you know, I, I don't got it. That's the kind of situation that the widow was in, except it was a much more extreme case. I was just trying to make this a little realistic. She was in a situation where I can't make you bread. She let him know what it is. I can't make you no bread. I can give you water and I'm really sorry. And he said, you know what? I'm, you're going to be blessed by doing this act of service with me. So she went ahead and used the little resource that she had and she made that bread for him. Shout out to her because not a lot of people could do it. Through the word we can see that this widow was clearly prepared to die. In verse 12 it says that as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. She was so set on dying. Now verse 13 says, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son for this is what the lord the god of israel says the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the lord sends rain on the land so she said okay you know what i'm gonna do this god's telling me I gotta give up my last resource. My son is, and I are going to die. I had it all planned out and God's come and you know, brought this man into my life. Let's just hope it works out. God, I'm gonna give you my all right now and I'm gonna go make that bread. That is pretty much the situation that the widow was in. So she went ahead and made the bread. As a result from listening to God and basically doing that act of service for Elijah, she was truly blessed. She had an abundance of flour, abundance of oil. She was not hungry and her son was not hungry. So she received the blessing. And I know we've all been in situations where, you know, God's kind of testing you or maybe you're, you have an assignment from him or maybe you have a task from him and you're like, you know what, God, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this and it better work out. And you do it and it just like, 
like everything in your life just lights up you're just the happiest person god just blessing you talking to you and the best communication you've ever been with him i know we've all had situations like that so she was lit she was like i have bread i have oil like my son's good we're all good like thank you god that i gave that little piece of the last resource i had up for elijah the stranger i don't know and in the end you blessed me so let's talk about the bad news because there's always bad news right verse 17 sometime later the son of the woman who owned the house became ill he um, grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing he died verse 15 was just describing the abundance of blessings they received after she had done that act of service for Elijah and given up her last resource for him and now verse 17 the son's dead the same son in the beginning who she's prepared to die with is now dead without her how are you going to feel okay this uh, video today is just centering the idea of feeling like God disappointed you okay we've all had that situation where we've done something we've taken a risk for God we've taken a risk we've done something that is kind of out there um, we've sacrificed something and we're like you know what God is really gonna bless me for this and he does for a little bit you know you feel a little good for you know a couple of weeks a good couple of days and then BAM something horrible happens like death like your son dying that's horrible something tragic happens to you and you're like God last week I just did something so big for you how could you do this to me how could you disappoint me like this it doesn't even have to be death it could be anything it could be failing a test after after sacrificing so much to help someone you failed your test or or losing a job or breaking up with someone someone breaking up with you it could be anything but at the end of the day, you feel like God's disappointed you. You're like, you know what, God? If I'm a Christian and Christianity is about devoting my life to you and I'm devoting my life to you and I'm giving you all of me and you keep disappointing me and you've killed my son, why did I even do the act of service for you? Why didn't I just die like I planned with him? Why did I die? Why didn't I just die with my son? Why am I living if my son's not alive? Why did you do this to me? How could you disappoint me like this? These are the kind of things that are going through our mind when things like this happen. What I love about the widow of Zarephath and why I really want to just study this with you guys is because she's so real and she's in the word for a reason because we can relate to her. Verse 18, she says, have you come out here to point out my sins and kill my son? That's what she says to Elijah. We can all relate to this because we all play that blame game. When something bad happens, we're like, oh, this person took all my time and distracted me. We all kind of do the blame game. It's just really human of us to do. And the, this widow did. She said, Elijah, you came out here with the purpose of distracting me so you could kill my son. That's pretty much what it is. Forget everything I did for you. Forget everything God led me to do. Forget all the blessings God gave me. My son's dead. My son is dead. You know, sometimes we kind of act like Christians are perfect. We act like people who have faith are perfect. When when someone gets in a car accident, thank you, Lord, I rejoice in your faithfulness. Thank you for this car accident. That's not realistic. Unless you're super duper Christian and kudos to you. It's not realistic every situation you're in to be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Jesus, my Savior. Thank you for letting me get shot. It's not really um, common for humans to just thank and rejoice and give thanks in their time of distress. We play the blame game. We blame people, we blame God, we blame anyone else but ourselves. Sometimes we even do blame ourselves. And that's why I want to study this widow because she shows such human reaction. Matthew 17, 20 says, um, this is apart from the story. He says, and he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Okay. When we play that blame game, we feel like we want to take that little piece of hope that we ever had, the little piece of faith that we had, the little, little, little mustard seed of faith. We want to spit on it, jump on it, cuss it out, throw it in the garbage. Like, it's just gone. And then what happens is when we eventually realize that God has order in our life and there's a plan for everything, we're scrambling in the garbage. Where's that mustard seed? Where's that? Where's it? Where's it? Because we want it back so bad. We're like, sorry, God, I, I got to look for it. You know, this is why I want to study the widow because I want to kind of speak on it and kind of prevent that from happening, prevent you from throwing out, temporarily throwing out your mustard seed and then scrambling it for it back once you kind of realize what God is really doing in your life. This widow had to go through despair. She had to go through mourning. She had to go through the blame game. She had to go through a lot of different emotions. And this was all God's will. God's seen that she did have faith in him. She did have faith in him and she did trust that something good was going to come out of what she did in the initial sense of, of sacrificing and risking. So he basically revived her son. 
he wasn't playing a game with her but she had to go through these things in order to really really trust in order to really understand God's importance in her life okay so God seen her faithfulness and he seen what kind of woman she was and he revived her son so now her son's not dead anymore we praise God because it made me really sad thing is with us is that with humans is that we do something for God and we're like, you know what, God, you're going to, I know you're going to bless me. I can just feel it in my spirit. My spirit senses are just tingling. Like I know it's going to come <laughs> and he does bless you and he may bless you and the blessing may last for a day or two and then something bad happens and then you're like, you know what, God, I'm so freaking fed up. What do you want from me? Do you want me to listen to you because I'm listening to you and you're still not helping me? Do you want me to not listen to you? Is there something I'm missing here? Like what is going on? Because I keep doing this for you and living for you and then you just keep disappointing me. We've all had that kind of situation and that emotion where something just tragic happens out of nowhere and you're just like, God, seriously, like I cannot, you know what I have on my plate right now. You know I'm struggling with these bills. I'm struggling with these children. I'm struggling with my relationship. I'm struggling with my health. And you're gonna throw this my way? Really? You couldn't just curve me for a, you couldn't just protect me for a, like this one instant? We all kind of go through that emotion. This is why I wanted to study the widow of Zarephath or Zarephath because she went through that. But the thing is that we need to realize is God has order in our life. There's order in everything that we do. There's order in everything that we go through. Another lesson that we can learn from this is that delay does not equal denial. Okay, God isn't a genie. He's not a juju master that you go to jump up, down, jump up and down four times and I'll give you a thousand dollars. God doesn't work that way. Faith is not just one event. Faith is consecutive. Okay, faith is consecutive it's not one time you don't have faith once and then everything just works out peachy in your life because then the world would be completely different it's a consecutive it's a lifestyle it's a consecutive act so when we go through bad things we don't just say you know what God tomorrow I'm gonna pray four hours after I pray four hours please just just give me this please just bless me it doesn't work that way it does not work that way we need to understand that it's a lifestyle yes I'm gonna have hiccups on the road yes I'm gonna have obstacles but I have to practice faith religiously, habitually, perpetually because it's embedded in me. It's my lifestyle now. God sees everything in our lives. He sees He sees me right now filming this video. He sees everything that we do. That means he knows our intentions behind everything we're doing as well. So when you're putting in effort, he understands that you're putting in effort. When you've made sacrifices, he understands that you've made sacrifices. And when you haven't, he sees that too. God is gonna restore everything in your life. That is the message here. God is going to restore everything. If it takes reviving a dead person to make you happy, he's going to do that. Who else in this world can do that but him? He is going to restore everything that you feel that you lost. But you need to practice faith and understand that there's order in your life. That's the key here. Understand that, okay, tomorrow may not be the best day, but it's not going to be forever. I have to go through tomorrow to get to the next day and the next day. I can't go from Monday to Wednesday. I have to go through Tuesday to get to Saturday. That's just how it is. That's just life. That's just what we kind of just need to understand. I just have to. It just has to happen. There's order in my life for a reason. The widow was literally going to die that day that Elijah met her. She was prepared to lay her son and her down, eat their last meal and die. Okay. God intervened in that situation and he made it right. He restored everything she lost. He gave her the, the resources she needed. He, he healed her son and revived her son. But the thing is, she had been suffering for a long time. To go to a point where you're ready to die today, that means you have been suffering for a while. God sees that. He sees everything that you've been through in your life. He sees everything that you, you, you've experienced. If she hadn't gone through an experience that made her humble, that made her giving, that made her someone who's willing to sacrifice, she would have been like, Elijah, don't even play right now. I don't have time to play with you. I don't know who you is. Get out of my face. I have to go die with my son right now. Like, you know what I mean? Everything in her life led up to that moment for a reason. And that's what you need to realize. Everything that you're going through happens for a reason. My favorite Bible verse, 1 Thess Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If I'm going through, if I'm having the worst day, I'm like, you know what, God? I have to go through this because something after this day ends, I'm going to wake up and reflect on the day I had and be like, wow, I learned this. And that lesson is going to help me move on in my life. After having a hard day, I'm going to extract something from that day. Something is there for a purpose. And I'm going to take that and it's going to move on with me, even on my good days. That's just how it works. And that's life. I just want to really stress that God isn't magic. 
God isn't a genie. He's not a juju master. He's not, um, you know, some kind of weird supernatural thing. God is our creator. He's the author of our life. And the thing is, compare a genie or a magician to an author. Authors sit down and take time and make sense of what they're doing. Magicians and genies and all those other things are sporadic and random and crazy. Authors sit down with knowledge and wisdom and pour out onto paper what is meant to happen in order. They make sense of everything. That's God. That's God's role. He's not just this crazy, creepy thing that you just tap him four times and he poops out and gives you what you want. That's not how it is. So if you have that conception, we need to just go back to the word and understand his, his, his um, role in your life. That's what we need to do. Understand God's role in your life. So that is my video, guys. <laughs> that is the Woman of the Bible number three. I hope you guys are enjoying um, the Woman of the Bible series. I'm really enjoying like studying about women, and I like that it could be any woman. It could be anyone. So if you guys have any requests for any woman that you're interested in the Bible that you want to kind of learn more about, definitely leave them in the comments. Again, I just want to thank everyone for subscribing and tuning in and just supporting me and my videos. I really, really appreciate all of your support. Um, and with that, have a great week. I hope you are all blessed and leave comments subscribe share all that good stuff i love you all follow me on social networks you can send me emails as well that information will be down in the down bar so yes um have a great day love you all bye